It's my pleasure now to invite out here uh, Mr. Eric Nicoli and Mr. Ian Rogers. Uh, you were all probably expecting Michael Robertson. Well, Sorry. Michael will be joining us via Kite. Check out uh, the MediumNet uh, Kite channel on the MediumNet blog site. Eric, in the topic of sea change moments, EMI was the first major to drop DRM. What, what brought you to that decision? I think the, just uh, the belief that it was uh, time to behave like we trusted uh, the consumer. Um, and also the belief uh, that uh, uh, locking it up uh, was no defense to it being uh, acquired for free if people were minded um, to do that. Looking back at your tenure at, at a major, not, not EMI, but the majors in general, what, do you, what were the big mistakes? Uh, the mistakes, uh, we did find it incredibly difficult, uh, indeed I would say impossible in the first few years of this decade, to collaborate. Right. Um, uh, my own view is that the absence of collaboration on digital uh, was a function of um, most of the majors, and certainly the, the largest of the majors, aspiring to be the gatekeeper of digital music, and therefore uh, they found it very difficult uh, to embrace the notion that they should license their music to others. Right, so I think that right now we're going to get Michael Robertson into the conversation. And I guess the question I want to throw out to everybody, you Michael, and also to Eric and Ian here, is, you know, we talk about an Apple-centric world right now. Is there room for innovation beyond the dominance of iTunes? Oh, undoubtedly. When I started at Victory.com, people thought I was crazy because at the time, real audio was the deal. They had 85% market share. They were the player. They were the server. They were the entire business. And it was hard for anyone to imagine a different world. I think that's where we're at today with Apple. Apple's done a tremendous job. And so it's hard for people to imagine any world besides what they see today. But for sure, it won't be an Apple-dominated world in the next 10 years. Other developers, other companies will catch up. I think another thing you'll see over the next you know, five to ten years is the complete collapse and decline of recorded music sales. So this means you know, oh. CDs, slot music, um, even I think a lot of digital purchases are going to decline. Um, that's what we're seeing right now. It, it's you know, what you're seeing in the newspaper industry and so many industries. And, and so I think that the way the revenue is generated has to radically change. Um, more subscription, uh, uh, more blanket licensing type of models. I think that's something to look forward to as well. What do you think the ISP's roles are, their role is in all this? Well, I think they could be a conduit. Listen, if, if the industry can show them a way to make more money, not just to avoid lawsuits, but to make more money, the ISPs can be a great conduit here. But the sad thing is there's still too many people in the industry that want to keep a tight fist on uh, uh, how people are interacting with music. I mean, there's too many people don't understand that today you can go to Pirate Bay and with one mouse click get 1,000 hits of the 90s on your computer. As long as the uh, industry is not keeping ahead of the pirates, it's going to be tough to channel that into a positive direction. Okay. Eric, your reaction? Uh, I agree uh, with Michael that, um, uh, that in the future, uh, uh, revenue will be generated in different ways. Uh, I think any business model um, that depends exclusively on the sale of records is going to be exceedingly challenged. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, that doesn't mean that record sales will disappear, but they are declining and I think uh, will probably continue. Um, to decline. Okay. And the last point is I think that we, we are in an era where music is being used as a means to a different end and the most spectacular example is Apple um, as opposed to just being retailed for the sake of retailing a piece of content from the content owner to the, uh, um, to the public. Mm -hmm. um, and so models will, will be um, along those lines and I think mobile and online communities are going to play a major, major um, role in the future. Okay. Ian, your thoughts? I think it's important for people to understand sort of, you know, the, the path that innovation takes and Apple has really taken advantage of this moment in time where there wasn't clarity, they had um, 
uh, you know, a, a great leader who could, who could rally all of, uh, everybody around one deal and one price and a consumer proposition that makes sense. But also, in, in the words of Clayton Christensen, who wrote The Innovator's Dilemma, you know, when the technology is not yet good enough, the integrated solution always wins. And that's what Apple has been. But um, as you know, the, the same book also says, eventually the, the technology overshoots what the consumers need and the disintegrated solutions uh, start, to, start to get more interesting and, and grow in popularity. And I, I, I absolutely think we will we'll see that. The DRM coming off, while I think actually coming off of iTunes is relatively meaningless for the average Apple consumer, I think it's huge for innovation. And right. if others are able to get the same deal, and as Michael said, you know, the kinds of companies that we see at CES every year are able to integrate digital media into their products more easily, I think we'll see a ton of innovation from non-Apple companies in the coming years. Well, let me ask you this as a closing question for you and Michael. Uh, besides the work that you're doing, who do you think is doing some cool things? Um, you know, there's, there's a ton of small companies out there, but I, I actually think that there's a, there's a bit of a, um, uh, a lack of, of innovation at, at the moment. You know, VCs are scared. Um, you know, the, the digital music space is not terribly att attractive to entrepreneurs um, at the moment. I think we, we have to um, create an environment and, you know, in particular, the major labels who are holding the majority of the licenses need to create an environment where innovation can thrive. Michael, you get the last word here. Is innovation stifled right now? Well, no, I wouldn't say innovation is stifled. What I would say is that uh, the commercial side is stifled. So when you're looking at where's the innovation coming from, it's not coming from the commercial companies because they're having to either go to the labels and get licenses, which is a painful, laborious process, or go through court, which is a multi-year process as well. But there is innovation happening, and it's coming from the dark side of the internet, from the pirates, from the underground. That is, is, is the beacon that's showing where the industry is going to be, where it should go. I mean, why can't I buy, you know, 50 of the best love songs with one mouse click. Why can't I buy that? I can get it online for free I can, if I steal it, but I can't buy it. So I think the innovation is out there, but you have to look underground and the industry be well served by spending some time on Pirate Bay, seeing what people are doing, and then giving them commercial options that mirror uh, what consumers are saying they want. Okay.